Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself and Marta, where as always I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. We're going to kick things off with the Intel i9-9990XE. Try saying that three times fast. Now what we actually have here is that this particular processor was made available to OEMs in a secret online auction. And one of the auction winners, as we now know, is Puget Systems. Now, if that name rings a bell, it should. That's because, well, Paul actually had the opportunity to visit them in Seattle. And they are a custom PC and hardware manufacturer. And Paul actually interviewed the CEO. There is a link to our tour video and interview in the description below this video. And, well, basically, they managed to get their hands on the 9990XE and they recently shared the specs of this and now they have followed this up with a bunch of benchmarks in things like Premiere, After Effects, so on and so forth. So let's get cracking on these results then shall we? And it comes in top of the class on After Effects CC 2019. So you can see it coming in just above the 9900K as we see a score of 1034 for the 9990XE which again is 14 cores at 4GHz with 5.1GHz turbo and then obviously the 9900K comes in at 985.3 and then the 9980XE which of course is the one down in this particular line comes in at 922.5 and of course it goes all the way down to the i7-9800X which scores 806 point eight. But what about Photoshop, I hear you ask? So interestingly enough, we do not see the 9990XE in the lead here, but it loses out by just a few points. I do literally mean less than three. And when you say, wasn't that two? No, because it's a, it's a point three score, but we'll get to that in a sec. Anyway, so what is actually top dog? Well, interestingly, it's actually the 9900K, which comes in with a score of 989. And the XE comes in underneath at a 986.3, so just beaten by a hair, close enough to say, I would say, margin of error, but you can make that judgment for yourself. There's going to be a, a link to Puget Systems article, they're finding all the tests they ran, all that sort of stuff, in the description below this video, so if you want to see all that, then it's, it's all there for you. There's a lot of stuff to get through, so... Uh, just get comfortable, is all I say. Uh, the last benchmark I want to visit before we move on to our next topic is the Premiere Pro benchmark. And here's where we see the XE once again in the lead with a score of 886, but the 9980 actually brings up the second position here with a score of 865, excuse me, 0.5. And for those of you wondering where the 9900K is, well, it's actually just below the halfway point towards the bottom with a score of 754.5 being bested by say for example the 1990 sorry the 9940x uh, but still beating like 9900x and the 9800x and so on and so forth so yeah go check out their article in the description below and also our video and lovely tour and CEO uh, interview with their CEO should I say but let's move on to the 1660 tie so we basically have a confirmation that the 1660 tie is going to be upon us quite soon as we have a picture a leaked picture of the Galax GeForce GTX 1660 tie and not only does this confirm that yep this graphics card obviously is real we kind of pretty much knew that at, that, at this point but you know there's now no room for denial um, we also get some confirmation of the specs as well. So we see confirmation that yes, it has 6 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory and does not support ray tracing. The word ray tracing is now replaced by Turing shaders on the packaging. So as we pretty much expected, no ray tracing calls in this particular GPU. And we're also going to be seeing a TU116 graphics processor with 1536 CUDA cores. Now interestingly this is not the only uh, leak we actually have online as we also have pictures of a palette 1660 and alongside that we also see some pictures for the 1660 tie by EVGA and those are both thanks to videocards.com so those two are pretty much just a look at what the variants of this card actually look like as you can see the palette and EVGA cards are quite small just a single fan uh, the Galax seems to be a little bigger from what I can tell on the actual box but perhaps it's outside the norm it's hard to say with only three graphics cards, not exactly a big sample size. Anyway, so interesting stuff. 
pretty much confirmation of everything except the price, which is very, very, very important, as I'm sure you'll agree. Anywho, we're going to move on to our next topic, which is actually regarding the Radeon 7, with some good news and some bad news, unfortunately. So we actually have a pretty significant, in fact, you could say huge oversight by AMD, as people are discovering that if you bought a Radeon 7 graphics card, that their cards do not actually support UEFI or UEFI. I'm not sure if I actually pronounced it correctly. I don't really say that word out loud a whole lot. I see it a whole lot. I don't really say it all that much. Anyway, so basically what actually happens is, well, again, this card does not support UEFI, and if you install your card in the machine, and for certain people, it causes their mother to engage CSM, which is compatibility to the support module, which is a key component of UEFI firmware that is basically needed to boot the machine in hardware that does not have UEFI support. And this was verified by Tech Power Up. So go find their article in the description below this video where they did a bunch of tests with their Radeon 7 sample and they basically found out that the BIOS does completely lack this support including a GOP or graphics output protocol driver. But thankfully at least with ASRock they have released a corrective BIOS updates which will correct this so it's going to be down to I think AIBs to release these updates and hopefully AMD themselves will uh, release one for the first party purchase ones but this again is a pretty massive oversight and kind of unfortunately flies in the face of some good world that they managed to unlock which is our second Red, uh, Radeon 7 topic today as we have reports thanks to Hardware Lux that AMD are apparently preparing to unlock several professional graphics features for the Radeon 7 that are otherwise only for those with a Radeon Pro series cards and apparently these are just going to be added in the up upcoming excuse me Radeon Pro 19.Q1 software suite so basically if you want to access these features you need to uninstall your Radeon Adrenaline 2019 drivers and instead install the Radeon Pro drivers so this is going to unlock a bunch of stuff like access to pro render certifications for you know, security, enterprise visualization, and a whole bunch of stuff. There's over 320 pro applications that are certified for these drivers. And also, apparently, AMD are going to be introducing a feature that lets you switch between the pro and adrenaline drivers on the fly without needing to reboot. So, if you're wanting to use this particular feature, but also still be able to game at the best you possibly can on this card with the gaming drivers, you can just switch between the two. And now that is a very, very cool feature. So, big thumbs up on that. A shame it was very much undercut by the bad news that I just kicked off things here with the uh, with this particular topic at least. So for anyone working in sort of professional enterprise, anything like that, the Radigan 7 just became a really, really amazing value add because well obviously it's missing some of the stuff of the pro level cards that you might need but but if you don't care about that sort of stuff you've got a card here that is way way cheaper than you might expect because the sort of rivaling professional cards are well above three thousand dollars which um is a bit of a price difference between that and the radeon 7 to to say the least so this makes it a pretty nice value add to be honest how many people will be using it? It's tough to say, but it's, it's a nice that AMD are apparently doing it. Even if you don't end up using it, it's still a cool feature that they have added that adds an extra nice value to the particular card. Hopefully they sort the UEFI issue out because, well, that is a pretty big, just how did this get missed kind of thing. But uh, we'll update you on that, of course. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, your support is very much appreciated. I'll see you next time.